Hashtag no music, no intro. Thursday night, Saints Block Party Podcast. Niners preview. We already got 14 concurrent people already in the in the chat right now. Uh, thank you. Ooh, streets, streets hot. Streets hot right now. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining me. YouTube, uh, please subscribe, like, put for the notification on. If you're watching this, I'm posting it to Twitter right now. Um, this is a joy. We have people who are still up. I know our dude Mark is up still. Our Bajan is up. And it's East Coast time where he is, so it's 11 p.m. over there. What? People just need some, people need some therapy right now, Ryan. People need some some Saints Block Party podcast there. And about to say, I don't know. I don't know if we have therapy. I don't know, bro. <laughs> but what you will get from us is the unfiltered raw truth of how shit is. Cause that's why maybe that's if we being real, like that's why people come to us and support us and and we appreciate everyone who does just a quick thing before we go into this you know so this we are a business so i did want to address this if you have not become a patreon yet there's no judgment maybe a little judgment um but if you do plan to become a patreon please 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 listen to this um apple is trying to do ungodly things to patreon so if you want to become a patreon Please use the link patreon.com slash Saints Block Party. Um, whether it's a month of a dollar a month, whatever it is you want, you feel like contributing, do not subscribe using the uh the app in the Apple store. Um, because Apple is trying to charge ungodly fees. So any new people who are signing up and become Patreons, please just use the website. You can use the website on your phone, just don't use the actual Patreon app to become a Patreon. That's my little spill on that. Do not use the app. Do not. Bijan said, unfiltered, raw, blacked. That's a different podcast. Uh, our our girl D became a Patreon today. Uh, oh, is in Discord. D said she's sleepy as fuck, but she wasn't missing this. Saints time, Ryan. Got Niners preview on Sunday. I'm going to be at the game up close Ooh. personal. Our dude, Eric, who that homo going to be sitting in our section. All that shit about let's hide shit from fans during training camp? Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, good. sir. You going to have no, an expensive sir. camera out? Oh, uh. oh, oh Eric Pennant getting, getting, getting work. Oh. Derek Carr in Akron? Oh, bro, it's, I right. am, bruh, I'm excited. So much. Uh, do, I want to start with the Justin Simmons thing. I want to start with the Justin Simmons thing. Start there. We don't. We ain't. We ain't talking about practice. Uh, shout out Shane. Uh, yes, Bajan in 4K. I'm drinking a, a cut water tonight, so you already know what's about to go down this podcast. Oh, I'm drinking some cut waters on on this bitch. It, sweat. <laughs> got sweat. Got the a, Got the AC on right now, Ryan. Woo. Justin Simmons. News comes out. He signs. He's he's an Atlanta Falcon one year deal, eight million dollars. News comes out that the Saints have been trying to to sign and woo Justin Simmons for months. Months. Oh, oh yeah, he missed. Oh, <laughs> months. Um, this just goes to show where the status of the team in terms of how the Saints are seen by players in the league by other front office people in the league i can't go into specifics and verbatim but it wasn't like it wasn't the money why justin simmons didn't sign with the saints it wasn't the length of the deal because that came out earlier that he wanted a longer deal and the saints want to do a shorter deal. he signed a one-year deal with the falcons one year eight million dollars as in as other as a player it just seems that he felt like the Falcons gave him a better chance and potentially also maybe some better coaching, a better chance to get coaching, maybe a better opportunity to maybe rank higher 
in the win loss column in the NFC South and the overall league. And he made a decision that the Falcons, and I know this is the same podcast, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it into a frame. The Falcons presented a better opportunity for him as a player than the Saints. It is as simple as that. Very simple, man. And- Couple of days, yeah. real quick. A couple of days before the sign, the Falcons signed Justin Simmons. The Falcons go out and get Matthew Judon for the Patriots for a third round. This is I, I've said this so many times for people who listen in terms of like where the Saints are thought of as a league, and I think now, now fans are kind of starting to see. And I said that like two years ago, bro. <laughs> two years ago that yeah. they were seen as a laughing stock in the league. And it just, there's so much just, just stress on the timeline and people are just upset and I Ooh. get it. And it feels dark right now because it just feels like, how can this, how can this get better when a big part of the problem are the people who are running the team? Straight up, straight up. That's the key right there people running the team and it's just hard to see any light coming you know what i'm saying like where is the where is the hope where is the light Uh-oh. coming from you know what i'm saying hashtag the agenda oh, just I mean, little, just, just little. that's just a, just a little you know but it's 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 tough man it's tough and i mean for simmons to go it it, it really annoyed me just that move not so much that the saints didn't get simmons because i was kind of indifferent about it like okay to get Simmons you know right fine you know that'd be fine I'm sure it'll it'll you know help the defense and you know cool but just the fact that he used the Saints Mm. to kind of get his name back out there like hey Mm. you know I'm taking visits Mm. and I I knew it bro I knew it in my heart I didn't tweet it or nothing like that but I said man watch, watch the Falcons watch the Falcons because I know Terry 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 be sitting back looking he said Shit, boy, just just as soon as back out there. Oh, he left. He left. He had dinner and he left. Man, I'm about to get this boy down here, man. About to get that boy down here. If him to go to the Falcons, I, I I just I hate the Falcons. I hate the Falcons. To us, us to lose anything to the Falcons, it just still grates me. Even even as much as the Saints annoy me right now. My hatred for the Falcons just goes so far, but oh, I I, I'm more I'm more pissed at the Saints. I'm not even mad at the Falcons doing what they're supposed to do. They tooling up, win, bro. They're trying, they're to, trying win. to win. They're tooling up. They're tooling up. Will they? Won't they? We'll see how that goes. You know what I'm saying? But they're tooling up. They're trying to get get ready to go. And I'm just looking at my Saints like, damn. You know what? Y'all, you know y'all what? Terry- like this? Yeah. <laughs> you like know what? This? Ter- you know what Terry did, probably, bro. He was probably with Justin Simmons at dinner. He pulled up the clip of Da not knowing what a metaphor was, and he was like, "Look at this dumb nigga right here, Justin. You want to be a part of this? You want to be a part of this? Look at dumb as a." <laughs> but John said Simmons and Bates gonna have car in the hell. <laughs> hell, bro. Remember, remember, remember Carl talking about yeah, the safety came off his responsibility. What? <laughs> I think that was it for me. I think that was it right there. I was like, you know what? I'm done with car. Done with car. Uh, Brandon B or Brandon B said he <laughs> has had a negative impact effect on the franchise from day one. The Deshaun Watson chase was the first sign. Players have regressed under him. I don't blame Simmons. I don't blame Simmons either. Like it's just oh, no. I don't blame him. As, but as a Saints fan, it's annoying just to see this is where our friend this is the franchise that we support at the end of the day as as much shit as we talk we we joke we whatever we just want the team to be good and successful like that's it like that's that's it it. that's it and fun and fun fun. d d put it the best she tweeted earlier she says fans say soldier on on twitter fourth and d if you if go follow on uh youtube um as Saints fans, the hardest pill to swallow is the lure and lights that once surrounded the Saints is gone. Gone. That's that's the hardest pill to swallow because it's just like, damn, man. Like, this is where we at, bro. This is where we at. And it's, it's a weird position because it's not like 
they actually, you know, they're bottom dwellers, but they feel like they are. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Is, I, I'll they say feel, this. The shit come out of training camp right now, bro. Like, I was, mm. we have been a, a hard seven wins. Seven, we was even said eight, eight, not seven and nine. In terms of win. <laughs> Trying to hold on to that seven. <laughs> it's getting on, bro. It's getting on. Um, our dude. Our dude Mind the Reese said, Oh, where'd it go? He said, Saints out here playing decoy coochie to the Falcons, man. <laughs> decoy coochie. <laughs> um, something that I go back to last season was that, that whole thing with the, the article with Mickey Loomis coming out talking about cultural tweaks, blah, blah, blah. blah. Oh, my God. I think about it a lot because, like, like well, this, the cultural tweaks have been the coach that you have hired in your in you as a GM and the decisions that you've made. Those are the cultural tweaks that have completely eroded since Sean Payton left. And I'm not going to get into a whole conversation about whatever, but the foundation and the program that Sean Payton and Drew Brees built, all that is gone. I'll give you a perfect example. Perfect example of a team being okay with me- uh, mediocrity. I know, that seems like a little thing, but the whole Jamal Williams in that preseason game, his celebration of getting six yards and, and struggled to get that six yards, to me, that's an indication that that's what the baseline is. Like, this is where we are now. Like, you're celebrating getting six fucking yards, bro, in a preseason game. Like, that comes from, and everyone, I always, I've said this for a while. Everyone talks about, it's, to me, it's not about the wins and losses with Dennis Allen. It's the entire culture that has trickled down to the players on the team. Like that mentality that, you know, I remember, I, was it Cam Jordan talking at the end of the season of how like they, they, they tied with the Bucks and then they, bur- like, bro, like y'all, y'all didn't make the playoffs. Like, right. th- like y'all did not make the playoffs. Like that trickle down of like it's okay being meh and like losers pretty much that's the biggest stuff with Dennis Allen that's gotten the team where it is and Mickey's seen it and he's you know he he's locked in because if he fires Dennis he, he has to admit that he made he made the wrong call and that it's just all this stuff that even isn't even about football it's just about hubris and and niggas right. with fucking egos and and shit like that like Exactly. It's, beyond, it's way beyond wins and losses it's, and shit. It's, it's way beyond. Run, right? It's way beyond blocking, tackling, covering. You know, throwing. It's it's just it's, it's deeper it's, than that. It is covering. It's, co- it's covering the ass. Like it's covering Mickey's it's, ass, bro. It's, it's, and, it's, exactly. and that and that's why, as much as we are pushing the agenda, and maybe it'll come to a point. But a big reason why Da probably is hesitant to play Spencer Rowler is because it's covering his ass because he's the one who went out and wanted Derek Carr. So if he admits that he was wrong, then he looks bad and he knows he's fighting for his job. It is all a cyclical process, and it's not even about how do we get this team better. Let me tell you another thing I heard. As all the things that have come in, all the stuff regarding Trevor Penning, like these last couple of days, these reports, bro, when, when Isaiah Foskey Pancake, like Isaiah Fosky, Ryan Fosky, Fosky. When I said that, I was like, "Okay, it's 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 done. It's it's done. It's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap." The team, and we've been talking about this. Like, shit, can we call a David Bakhtiari? Can we get a, a Donovan Smith? Can we get somebody? Like, can we get Please. somebody? Please. And I, and what I was told is that the team is dug in now. Last season, y'all gave this man what three games, four games? I don't even remember how many games it was. I right? remember. And you pulled him immediately, and now you're dug in when he's regressed from last season. Looks completely like, by all accounts, looks completely worse than he was last season. And now you're digging in. Now you're digging in. Can you? I'll ask you this as as a person. Imagine you, an NFL player, in the way you find out that you're benched is you have to have a subscription to a beat reports website, bro. <laughs> like you can't even read that shit for free, bro. Like you got to pay. I'm like, wait, wait, what? I got to pay? Um, um, 
And imagine coming to work like that. Imagine coming to a job with that type of morale. You know what I'm saying? And morale and all that matters. It does. And this man. isn't it this does. isn't not to take you know responsibility off of Trevor Penning because he's a no. No, no, professional no. A professional football player that has to perform. You know what I'm saying? And he's not performing. Period. Maybe he's just not yes. good. I don't know. I don't know. But to regress how he has, man, it's just like it's just like what happened to the standard. Like there was a time, bro, I just didn't worry about the offensive line. Like I worried about it a little bit, like, hey, are they gonna be good? Are they gonna be great? Are they gonna be but you knew that Sean Payton would not feel a poor offensive line. Just wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna feel the bad one. Nope. It might be average. It might not be, you know, it might be okay. But you every game plan week to week, the first thing he's looking at, what's the protection plan? What's the protection plan this week? You just never you just didn't have to worry about it. I mean, and he also like, he grew as a coach, right? Exactly. That, that Dallas game. The only game I missed watching that Super Bowl season. After the DeMarcus Ware, like, Undertaker came back and he just compl- – Sean Payton, anytime – after that game, he always had – not that he didn't before, but he even had more of an emphasis of how do we stop the other team's best pass rush. Right. I'm if not it's, it's, to the – Not about to lose to this guy. Not about to no, let his, not him. this guy wreck the game plan. Not about to let it happen. And, and it's just go, sorry, it's, sorry, I, I'm sorry, sorry to cut you off about, about your, no, no, no. your point. I just I don't even have a point, bro. I'm just like I'm just like what well, just what happened to the I just don't feel like there's a standard. There's somewhat of a standard on a defense. Mm, but yeah, there is. even then but even then is like man, when we face like a good offense, it's like it's like okay, you know what I'm saying? It's like okay, now we just we're back to being an average defense, you know what I'm saying? Like and this this team, bro, it's just at a spotlight. It's going to have to – like the defense will have to carry this team again. Um, it will have to keep teams under 20 points again. And, <laughs> and in just, the modern NFL, bro. In the modern NFL, bro. And it's like – and if this team can't run the ball, bro, like that's just going to be – man, it's, it's, it's going to be bad. And look, I know we haven't seen the scheme. We only see one preseason game. Who knows? But AK injured. Kendra, where you at? Ain't seen him. You got Jamal Williams taking <laughs> Jamal Williams taking rest days. <laughs> a vet day. A vet day for what, nigga? For what? To play Pokemon Go? Like what are we doing, bro? I can't. I, can't. And I saw something about when they took the pad, they had the pads on the day, then they took them <laughs> off. I'm like. It's like it is off. I don't know what's. I just don't know what's going on, bro. And look, man, like every everything can change come week one, and they actually show some. I would, hope, I would hope so. This the goddamn Panthers, nigga. Like, and I was looking. I was like, damn, we play the Panthers literally in three weeks. Three weeks man, is real cra- football. That's crazy, football. Ryan. That's crazy. Real football. So like that, t- it clock ticking, man. All this. Like well, I'm done with the I'm done with the practice reports, bro. I can't do it no more. It's like <laughs> no, I think bro. everybody done with them, bro. Like it was check out, nah, bro. It, but but just watching Twitter, bro. The poor B riders they can't even report shit. Like it's, their call is eleven four eleven. Oh shit, just getting cussed out of them. Liar, liar. Yeah, I'll check down, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> like you can't. They can't report, bro. Like, people just don't want to hear it no more, man. They're not no. trying to hear it. They don't want to hear you, it, man. You can't fool – because it's that's the thing. It's like our eyes don't lie. Like, we know what we saw. We know right. what we saw. And it's. I think here's the thing. It's not like that one series that the Saints offense had. Or maybe it was, it was two series. I don't even remember. Two. Yeah. Was, yeah, it was two. Was just like – oh, this is what they look like. It's like, no, we also have what it looked like last year. So it's like, y'all, y'all like the, and I get it. I under, completely understand why Clint Kubiak wants to wear very vanilla. He's, and, and Sean used to be very much like that too, offensive and defensively. But mm-hmm. I said this in the Discord, nigga, the Cardinals had two starters on defense out there, bro. Two, two. 
And our first team looked like that. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord. <laughs> I just it just that's what I'm saying, bro. And it's like I don't want to hit a nine scheme and stuff because it's like, okay, nobody's scheming. The defense is not scheming. Like it was so we can't <laughs> run power. We can't like like that's that's all I'm saying. It's like it the even the, even Caesar Weed said after the game, he was like, Look, our execution was awful. Like it was just yeah. uh uh, what it, I think it was uh the tight end. What's his name? The, the white kid. No, from the Raiders. Oh, Foster. Moreau. Oh, uh, Gavin. Foster, Moreau. Foster Moreau. Foster Moreau. Even he, he he was like super disappointed, you know, about the execution. And that's the thing. Like, even Michael Lombardo was talking about this. Like that's the main thing you want to see in the preseason. Is like, yeah, how, how are they execute? Like, are they mm. execute? No. Yeah, of course mm. they won't be scheming. You know, some players are gonna make mistakes, but is the execution there? And they've been went way out to California, didn't have fans there, wanted to have mm. this nice secluded mm. space where they could just focus mm. and get right with, you know, nice weather. I'm thinking, okay, the execution at least should be top notch. On point, no. bro. On point. It's terrible. It was terrible, man. It was terrible. Maybe that'll change against the 49ers. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Um, so I like had a, I had like a list of things we've already kind of hit on them in some type of way in a very short period of time. But one thing I did say was that just Trevor, and I know that probably like, I, this is a weird thing, right? Trevor Penning in no way should be starting on the offensive line at all. No, but yet they're still going to like, they're, they're wanting to see how he plays against the Niners to finally make that decision. Like that's like, what, what? Like you, like the the month plus of practices said told you, like this man so, getting pancaked by Fosky. That would have been it right there, bro. That'd have been it. I'd have said, you know what, Penny, let's, let's, let's go get back to the room. Let's just head back to the room, dog. Just head back to the room and take a day. And like on a serious note, though, on a serious note, and you talking yeah. about it, plenty. The guy does need like I really think they should get like a sports psychologist. Please, like to, the, the people don't understand the things he's doing is like he's not doing like day one, like high school offensive he, lines, he like we just, football, bro. Like the the feet and wait, it's just oh my god! I'm just like, how is he? How have you been in the league this long? Like how? And this is not even to smash him. I'm just like. Something's no. wrong. It's like it's something is wrong here, and you invested so much in this player. Like I would not give up on him. Like I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Like here, like what's what's going on? Let's have a sit down, me and you. If I'm Denzel, I'm sitting on me and you. You know what can we do to help you? You know what I'm saying? Like what what do we have to do? Let's bring in outside help. Let's do what we got to do just to just to save your career. Like screw starting. Right. Like screw starting for the season and all that. Just to save your career, bro. Like, cause it's it's not looking good at all, man. It's not, um, and that's not even the only spot. Like, you got left guard. That's like you got like Lucas Patrick stop, there, but it's just like Sasa Sasa Verde. Sasa Verde ain't seen him in. Like, what are you doing, bro? I got. I don't know. This is this is complete fandom. This was complete fandom. But it was like his birthday yesterday, two days ago, and he had like stories on his IG, bro. And I was and like the post of stories made me upset, bro. I was like, like nigga, post the stories about your birthday right now. You've been missing like three weeks. Why are you supposed to story, nigga? <laughs> Get on the complete, field. Complete, complete fandom <laughs> at his absolute max, just that it crossed my mind, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, Bajan said DA is going to ask Penning how to help, <laughs> how to help through the NOF comment section. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> um, we didn't even really talk about like the, the Saints and Niners practices, um, being canceled, but oh, yeah. the joint practices didn't happen. The, the, reason that the Niners gave, or at least Kyle Shanahan gave is like the, you know, they didn't have enough healthy players. I don't know if this is true or not, but like I have just a suspicion that Kyle maybe saw some preseason clips uh, the Saints had, and he was like, "What the fuck 
fuck is my team going to gain against this fucking team? Like, exactly. Like, it's, a it's, a, it's a waste of time, man. <laughs> I'm about to do all that. Got to go down there, travel, bring all this <laughs> logistics. Got a hotel. No, no. Oh, we, no. we, we see y'all on Sunday, nigga. Like we not gonna be there. Um, <laughs> so what else? Um, it's an underrated thing, right? But I, it just hit me today. AK didn't practice. Jamal oh. got a vet day, and Kendra wasn't healthy. Who was out there toting the rock, Ryan? Mims, Robinson. God damn, bro. Are you like that? And it, 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 I, just, I was going to say, getting back to the thing, right? So they're wait. So it sounds like a big key in their decision if they're going to move on from Trevor Penning at right tackle and figure something else out is that they're going to, they're waiting to this Niners preseason game to see how it goes. I don't know if Nick Bosa pass rushing the ball is going to, maybe he doesn't, but just on the off chance that he maybe gets a series, I just feel like that's a setup. Like, and I get it. He's like, well, you know, you, you're going to have to play, play against players like that in the regular season. If you're waiting to see what he does against the Niners to make a decision if he needs to be benched or whatever, you are set like that's one that's dumb coaching. Two, like he doesn't have a shot. He doesn't have a shot. If you're thinking that you you've already made a decision, exactly. Like if you if you're thinking, okay, I got to see this one more game. Well, it's a, decision's already made. Yeah, decision's already made. Like like with Fuaga, I'm not I'm not waiting to see if he can play at left tackle. I, I, I'm, right. he, I know he can. Not right. How good is he? You know, he, yeah, he needs reps and all that stuff. But I know he could be there, and, and I won't have to, you know, tear my eyes out. You know what I'm saying? But you've already made a decision, man. You know? So it's it's dark, bro. <laughs> as dark as it may be, we got 46 people, uh, 46 concurrent viewers on right now. So we appreciate y'all for uh, just living in this this current era of the Saints with with both of us. Um, something that's been a very underrated thing that's been on my radar this training camp is I have no confidence in kicking stability on this team. Mm, very underrated storyline. It's been on my radar. Very man. underrated. Like, yeah, I think Groupie a day or two ago went six of ten. Um, I, it just feels like like this team. We saw it last season of how very clutch kicks that weren't made changed the whole outcome of the game. And you would think that going into this, like this is Groupie's second year, blah blah blah, he'd be more consistent, blah blah. I, it just doesn't sound like that's been the case in training camp. Charlie Smith, um, kind of the same, but he's like never like he's. This is like kind of new for him. It's just a thing on my radar where if it's an issue in training camp, it's more likely it's going to probably be an issue in the regular season. So I would not be shocked at all. Just prepare yourself as Saints fans. There might be some missed kicks. Whoever the field goal kicker is where you're like, that should have been made. I'm just, it's just something that I've been keeping an eye out on. Yeah. And, uh, but Charlie Smith, I mean, can he even play? Like I know he's a international oh, player and all I, that stuff. So, no, no, no. so it's, I mean, Groupie's the guy. You know, Groupie's the guy. And the Saints are going – I mean, they're going to need clutch kicks. It's going to be yes. another one of them seasons where offense gets on the field, try to run the ball two times, gets nowhere. Now it's third and nine, and you have to – you know, all that wide zone, play action, all that stuff goes out the Go window. On. It's third and nine, third and ten. Derek offense, Carr is going to stand oh. back there. All on got to hold up. Derek Carr got to read the NFL defense and drop back pass with three wide receivers out and patting the ball with who knows who at right tackle, a rookie at left tackle, who knows who at left guard, and try to complete passes to Chris Olave, Rashid Shaheed, and who knows else? A.T. Perry? (laughs) A.T. Perry with her ear. I guess. (laughs) 
So it's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be one of those things where it's just like another three and out, another three and out, another three and out, hoping the defense just hold the teams just enough to we could just kick a field goal here, kick a field goal there, keep within range. It's like, oh, we back here again, bro. And maybe it might, maybe that might not be the case. Maybe might that be. might not. Maybe that Clint Kubiak offense just going hump. At least in the beginning of the, at least early, we know it's going to be a struggle, bro. We know it, man. We know right. it. Um, it is likely to be a struggle. Going to this Niners game, what are what are some things that that you want to see? You it could be player, it could be whatever. Like, what are some things you are hoping to see? From this team on Sunday, Yo Wolf, what up? I'm looking at you, man, and looking like you getting slimmer, man. And I'm noticing that I'm dropping some pounds. And the last time we did this Vertimax ad, we were a little heavier in our lives, and we can safely say that Vertimax is where you need to be to help improve your athletic performance. No question, man. And look, if you know about Vertimax, you've seen guys like Alvin Kamara jump out the building. How do you think he does that? That's because of Vertimax. Drew Brees, the athleticism he's shown, shaking Falcons players, diving in the end zone. Ooh. It's Vertimax. So, I mean, Vertimax.com, you definitely should check that out, folks, because it's helping everybody. With Vertimax at Vertimax.com, you have the V8 platform, you have the Raptors. They're designed to enhance physical jump, agility, and power. It helps create more athleticism and gives you a foundation to be great at what you want to do. Go check it out at Vertimax.com, the V8s, the Vertimax Raptor, Vertimax.com. Check it out. Oh, man, you know. Uh-oh. No, we won't see, bro. Uh-oh. <laughs> No, we won't see. We won't see the agenda. Oh, yeah. I, the uh, agenda. Uh, I will there, see. there may be something that works. Maybe a graphic for the podcast for some merchandise. Maybe, maybe. I don't. I, I'm. I've said too much. Um, but listen, man. I, I I don't want to sound like a broken record, but something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is I've gone to quite a few training camps, um, whether it be joint practices uh, under Sean Payton, um, quite a few joint practices like in Orange County or whatever um, here in, in California, um, went to all the practices, like almost all the practices in Oxnard before the 2011 season. The way that Sean Payton did things and, I'll, and it just stood out to me. And even if you just go back and look at training camp reports in the past, at points in maybe it was seven on seven, maybe it was team, like Drew would be with the ones and then the two would be with the twos. And then it would flip a little bit. Drew would be with the twos, right? And then the backup would be with the ones and mm-hmm. just mix it up. And I was just thinking of like, why doesn't that happen anymore? Right. You like, right. Like, why, why does that not happen? Because... And I, I know why, because the Saints have a quarterback who has a, a, a ego that they have to protect. But I would just just be curious how things would look if you gave Rattler two team series with not. I don't even want to say the starting offensive line because <laughs> no, right, but, but but I mean, it's not. It's probably not too different than what he played with the South Carolina. To, to be honest with you, like Greg Cosell said, it was the worst O line in, in like a power. But it's, it's different. NFL speed, defenses are different. I would just wonder how it would look with him getting a couple of series with the start with the, with the ones with Olave out there, with Shahid out there, and I have I have a picture in my head of how it would look like, and. If he were to do well in those snaps, and I mean like well, well, I think the the buzz would even be more. I could I could say this safely on the team. There are players on the team right now that wants him to start. I, right now. Now I believe it, man. Will that happen? I don't know. But th- this is the one thing, the one thing out of all this darkness and whatever the one thing that could be 
a like shining beacon for the team for potential long-term success. And I just feel like it would behoove them at some point. If things are looking that two week two to week seven stretch, and if 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 they go like if they I don't know, bro, like that stretch is like going back and looking at that stretch now with what we know about this team now, and you kind of get a win right now, bro. Like I don't I don't I don't know I don't know where it comes from. Um, Stuff. Okay, I'm 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 pulling it up. The greatest thing in podcasting history, uh, week two. Uh, week two is the Eagles. Oh, wait. Nope. That's preseason still. Sorry. So week two is Eagles. Wait, we play the Cowboys. Cowboys. Oh, this format is dumb. Okay. So Cowboys, Eagles, Falcons at home, Chiefs, Bucks away, Broncos. Oh, sorry. And then Chargers. Mm. Maybe two wins. Maybe, nigga. Maybe Maybe, two wins. You got to show me, man. You got to show me. You got to show me be Carolina. It should be Carolina. It should be. But I don't know. Like, like it's fundamental things you got to do in the NFL to win, bro. Like, block. Tackle, protect, tackle. Like, I'm not worried about the defense. I'm not worried about the defense. You know, even without the Justice Simmons signings and all that, I'm not worried about the defense. Although the injuries are racking up. But, look, Marshawn Lattimore did return to, didn't return to practice, but he's on the side working out and stuff like that. So he's, he's back in phase. She'll be coming back. I thought Alante Taylor has looked – I think he's had probably the best Seller, preseason. Bro. Like just whole off season, I thought he's had a great off season. Stella. He just looks he looks ready to go. Um, Adebo, I don't know where he is with his injuries. He's still not practicing yet. Um, so like they, you know, man, the Saints kind of banged up, bro. Like they got some. Ooh, you look whoa. at that injury list. I'm like, and there's no prognosis. We don't know if these are like one. Like I know Fuaga left today with like some back tightness. We don't know what that is. We don't know if that's like a one day thing or not. Uh, Elvin Kamara, he's dealing with back tightness. Don't know if that's like a long term issue or not. Uh, it's just a lot, lot, a lot of little things with this team, bro. That we just gonna have to wait and see. But I didn't, I didn't mean to do a segue. Um, your thoughts regarding we were, we were talking, you were talking about preseason, what you wanted to, what you wanted to see. We 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 want to see the agenda, bro. We want to see it. Like that's it, not and I wonder I wonder how they're gonna approach it because this past game you got you know two series with the starters, you got Jake Hayner for about a what quarter maybe, and then you got the rest was he- uh Riddler. I just wonder how they're gonna approach it this time. Like Right. You know, will they go will they go you know, will it start first will we see the starters, which I think they will. Ooh, they need they, it, bro. They need it. And will they go, you know, Hainer again? Will they let him get, like, more time and let, you know, Rattler get the cleanup duty? Or will they let Rattler get more time? It's going to be interesting. I would want to see more Rattler. Um, and that's no disrespect to Jake. No. But I just I just want to, I want to see more. I want to see, Kenny, okay, the things that he did, not only the things he did well week one, but the things he didn't do well. Can he improve upon those things, mm-hmm. which I think he can. I, I mean, I've seen it in the game, him make a mistake and then learn from it during the game. You know, so I want to see that week-to-week progress. Can he learn from mm-hmm. mistakes he made week one, carry those over to week two, and just and just keep building. And that's the whole process. I'm fascinated by the process of developing the quarterback. And yeah, the Saints should be too. The Saints shouldn't be in this whole Bruh. Well, they protect, should protect their car thing. Like y'all should be so invested into trying to make this work. You know what I'm saying? So invested in developing this kid. It's like it's. So I want to get to a question that James just sent to set up for the super chat 4.99. Appreciate you, James. Thank you, James. Um, how much pressure we do you think the defense is under given the offensive issues? Tons, tons, tons. man. Stressing and. I, I don't I, I don't 
I'm not going to go out there and say this, that every defensive player has this in their mind because it's not true, but I can probably healthily speculate that there are a few players on defense that can't stand Derek Carr because they just feel like, like <laughs> you, you don't, you don't do anything offensively. And we got to come in and, and rescue and, and be the savior. So, yeah, I, I, no, I, 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 mean, I, I know the defense is like, oh, geez, hear this, hear this <laughs> now, go again. Shit. <laughs> Uh, but going back to your point of developing a quarterback, the Saints are trying to walk this really weird tightrope, right? Yeah. Where they have a quarterback that largely, like, they, I can say, like, they don't believe in themselves. They don't, like, and, and I can say that because their actions show that, but he's still on the team and he's still the, starter in quarterback one where everything that their actions has shown they wanted to trade up and and draft michael Penix didn't happen they got spencer rattler in the fifth round and from the time he was drafted till like now he has improved and improved and improved and improved to where other players on the team feels like he should be starting now it's one thing that me adam you wolf podcast people are saying that when people, when players on the team think that it, it, it goes to show like, it's not just us. We're, like we're right. not pushing an agenda just to push it. <laughs> so going to your point of like, man, every little resource that the team had available, I am pouring it into 18, pouring it into them, bro. Like, cause you have to, I keep saying, like, whatever happens this season, the most important thing to me as a fan is they have to know if he is good enough to be a starting NFL quarterback that if they get a top 10, top six pick, that maybe they don't have to address quarterback. They can go another route right. because they feel comfortable that he's the guy that they can have going forward. Because one, if you can answer that question this season, even as dark as this season may end up being, it may, in the long run, in the long term, it may completely be a godsend. Exactly. And that that's what they give lip service to. Like, what, what did Mickey Loomis love to say? We're in the quarterback development business. He loves saying that Brown draft time. We're in the QB development business. Okay. I'll you show it. Of, of, man, what was it? Uh, Sean Canfield, Ian Book, Garrett Grayson, He's Chase saying. Daniel. I'm a sicko. Uh, Ryan Griffin. I'm a sicko for naming those names off the top of my head. Sean Payton developed those. And the ones that he that he could. But some were just bad. Some were just bad. He couldn't develop Not that good, yeah. You have one that was the number one overall recruit in the country. His talent jumps off the screen. Like, this is the one you need to be developing. Like, if you want to talk about you're in the quarterback development business, show us that you can develop them. Now, my question, now, now bro, if, I, if, if I'm Clint, man, if I'm Clint, it's like, hey, Spencer, it's going to be me. It's going to be Andrew working with you. Nobody else. I don't want the A next time. <laughs> Just gonna be us, right. bro. I don't want anyone else to talk to you. Just us. <laughs> oh, and look, Andrew was working closely with a man. Uh, closely, bro. So, I mean, they, they, I, I know there are people on this team that want that to work out. I know it because they, you can't be at this level in the, in the, in football and not be able to see. You know what I'm saying? Like you. You see it. You see it's, it. You know, what I'm it's a, this is a completely different, like alternate timeline. But had the Saints drafted Mahomes in 2017, like in those practices and training camps, like at some point it would have been like, oh shit! <laughs> like even with Drew in the building, bro, it's like well, exactly, exactly. Oh shit! And that's not, <laughs> like that's not a that's not a disrespect to Drew. That's just like all. damn. Damn, this kid, all. we got we got to get this kid on the field. You know what I'm saying? Like, because <laughs> it's the future, bro. It's the future. And 
that's the thing. It's like this team has not shown any inkling of planning for the future whatsoever, man. Whatsoever. Their moves are so mixed up. You know, they first they, you know, they they're budgeting and they're not trying to spend money, but they're trying to go, you're trying to woo Justin Simmons. You know, uh it's like what what are we what are we doing? What are we building for the you're trying to sign up to a short term deal? It's like it's I feel like they they're just trying to just win enough this season. You know what I'm saying? Like just win enough this season to shut us up. Shut the Saints Bach Party podcast up. Shut the Saints fans up. Shut the team up. Like, look, we won 10 games. Are y'all happy now? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what they want to do. It's like that's where they're mind. And it's just such that's a – That's wild. Like, that's wow, bro. Like, and to think like that as an organization, like, like where, Shout out. Where, where, where are we? Shout out, Jay. Our dude Rod in, uh, Rod in the chat just said, What's, what is the vision? Um, What's the vision? We talked about the Justin Simmons piece of the thing. We didn't really even talk about the Saints part of it in in regards to nigga who's going to be starting opposite of Honey Badger because Jordan Howden was like running with the third team most of training camp. Mm-hmm. It's going to be rotating, bro. It's going to be a bunch, just a bunch of guys. Which okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay, mm-hmm. what what PJ doing? What PJ doing? <laughs> Shit. It's gonna be oh. John Abrams and Will Harris and all these guys. It's like, okay. Okay. All right. All right, man. Um Niners game. Some I, I, I hopefully he remains healthy. Sounds like Bub Memes had a good good day to day. Um good you know, I want to see him in preseason, bro. I want to see him in preseason, see how he does yeah. he does out there. Um the as much as we harped on the one thing that is a, a heavy strength of this team is the linebackers on it. They are deep at linebacker. And a question I'm very curious is how many linebackers that they, they carry on the team. You know, yeah. you know, three for sure are solidified. They're going to carry DeMario. They're going to carry Pete Warner. They're going to carry Willie Gay. Then it gets after that, you have uh, De, uh, DeMarco Jackson, who's, just has flashed a lot. Jalen Ford, who got hurt, but then even in the snaps he had in this past preseason game, I thought he had an overall pretty good game. You have or- uh, Anthony Orgy out there who's looking mm-hmm. good. Like I, I don't know. It's 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 one of the mm-hmm. good things where it's like I don't know. I don't know I don't who know. makes the team. Then especially like even with the kickoff rules, you know, it's like the type of players that play mm-hmm. special teams might be changing. So I don't even know. Like, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to play out. But like you said, it's a it's a deep group. Pete Werner got played, paid, got hurt. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Back to my I don't point. know what type of injury it is. I don't know what kind of injury it is. It could be, you know, just a neck hair or something. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, they're deep there. They're deep at linebacker. It's, it's I mean, the, the pass rush look, I feel better about the, defensive line today yes. than I did like, you know, three weeks ago. Absolutely. You know, because I, I went back and looked. I thought Brees C, like even though he missed a lot of time, I thought he looked, you know, real good in the uh, preseason, getting upfield. I thought Chase Young still looking good. He looked mm-hmm. physical. Big um, creep. He got big creep. He going to do his thing. They're playing Cam Jordan. They got this little NASCAR package that they're running with, like Cam Jordan and Peyton Turner inside. That look interesting. Even Peyton Turner, I was like, oh, I see you. I see you doing a little okay, stuff. Okay, PT. Okay, PT, not eight. Now, now Foskey, they had, Foskey played the most snaps of any defensive player in the preseason game. The most snaps, bro. They had to play Wait, 55 snaps. I feel like the, of the of all preseason games or just the Saints and of, Cardinals? Of this, of this oh, Saints-Cardinals the- preseason game. They had 55 defensive snaps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but they go to practice and pancake. <laughs> like, there go. This is I hell just, on. I just can't get over that shit, dog. I can't get over that shit. They running trains on that boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> can, can we things we want to see? Can can we see something from Isaiah Foskey um, in preseason? And I know we what? there are a lot of jokes. To, <laughs> 
I've been asked around, is he going to face Pitt? <laughs> I don't know. What's up, RG? I don't know if it's going to happen. But wouldn't it be just uh, hilarious in like in a good way of like Trevor Penning go out there on Sunday, bro? He just have like a great game. Like he just look, <laughs> he just look like settled in, bro. Just like stout. I hope so, man. I hope so. That'd be that'd be interesting. Just just a nice clean game, bro. Clean, bro. Just because <laughs> nobody asked him to be, you know, like the second coming of Ryan Ramchick or nothing. Like just just be okay. Okay, don't get beat inside. Take your pass rusher, you know, and guide him around the arc so the quarterback Make him go the long up. way. Make him go the yeah, long make him way. Go the long way. And that's it. Be you know, be a speed bump between him and the quarterback. That's it. That's it, bro. That's all we asking. You're on the right side, so the quarterback can see you coming, see what's coming. Like just that's it, bro. That's all we asking. You know, simplify it for him. We'll see. We shall see. I don't know. I don't. I don't either. Uh, I'm trying to think. Anything else is just. I, w- I don't think Christian McCaffrey is going to play. Um, part of me was just hoping he would play just a little bit, just to see the the defense against him. But I don't think he's going to play. Um, but I would like to just see, you know, the defense continue to like look good. Like Willie Gay, man, Willie Gay was humming, bro. Like that's like if you went back and watched that game. He was all over the field in that Cardinals game. Um, so that was definitely was. A, good, a good free agency sign. And, and just overall with the offense, can it just look – can it just execute? Execute. Just, That's it. Just execute. Just s- s- simple stuff, bro. Just simple, simple stuff. Like, um, can, we get, can we get that little Chiefs preseason game from last year? Like, <laughs> I know we're not – I know we're not gonna buy into it and nothing like that, but you know, at least shows that y'all been practicing. Like, dang, <laughs> what y'all been doing out there? Like, dang, <laughs> going to Puesto? <laughs> Nigga, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't do know. not know. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll open it up. Uh, James Smart said, "Kendra, where is this dude? The trainer room. That's where Kendra is. <laughs> Kendra in the trainer room, bro. Chilling. <laughs> he, he might not play." He may not practice in the tr- in training camp whatsoever. It may not potentially play in the preseason, and still might have a roster spot. And I like it. I don't know, man. Like it's it's. I have no clue. I I ain't got no clue. None. None. Jinx. Um. What what does you know? What do what does the chat want to see? in the preseason game also like we didn't really we didn't really sit in it for a second we did ask a couple of our people in our discord to make up some good metaphors and i get it man like you are you a head football coach you might not the level of just dumbness that dennis allen sounded when he was talking about a metaphor bro not knowing what a metaphor was bro i just i just Was he being funny though? Like, was he trying to I be? I don't. Funny? That's what I'm talking. Nah, bro. It it did not seem that he knows, way at he, all. He bro. knows what a metaphor. Like, that is Allen doing a metaphor is. He knows what it is, man. And was he just I trying mean, to be funny? Funny with the media? I think he was just trying to be funny. Like, oh, what's a metaphor? Like, trying to be cute. It's like it's not funny. <laughs> Shut up, bro. Like, uh, no. Uh, the wizard Kelly said, "Nah, he was dead ass." Like. <laughs> That's where, like, <laughs> I'm trying to give him grace. No, bro. Bob. No, man. <laughs> bro, I, I showed the clip to Jay, bro. As soon as he said, like, she she, sh- she shut it down, bro. She's like, I can't watch this. Like, no. It's too, <laughs> too cringy, bro. Uh, Jashawn said, I want the first team to put some points on the board. Please. Uh... <laughs> Ryan said he doesn't know what a QB spot is. Why do you think he knows what a metaphor is? Um, hey. Wait, what? Bunch, are you for real? Nah, for real? I feel like Usher right now. Uh, I think I think Bunch was kidding. Maybe. 
Um, okay, I figured as much. You had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Um, so thank y'all for for coming and and showing up. Um, please, if you are not a Patreon or a YouTube member, please be, become one. Uh, the Zooms we had like twenty plus people for the first preseason game Zoom against the Cardinals, bro. Like it so was. <laughs> Uh, so Ryan will be hosting the zoom on Sunday. I'll be at the game, the recap pod for the Niners saints preseason game, uh, will be Monday night because I'm going to be at the game. By the time we get back from the game, get home, it's going to be hella late. So we will be recording it on Monday night at 8 PM uh, Pacific standard time. Uh, going over everything from the game, and we'll catch up then. And we we do have a very, I will say, next week is a very busy, busy, busy um, week for us. We're doing the preview, or sorry, the recap on Monday, potentially, hopefully, a special guest joining us on Wednesday, um, and then the final preseason game is on Sunday, uh, you know, against the Titans. It's um, crazy. And then there's there's cuts and all that and then there's going to be football in three weeks so it's crazy bro it it is upon us real football we we gonna get answers oh yes we will you can't you can't you can't hide you can't hide the fans no more bro you can't just i i it was on the list the prices to get to see the carolina saints home opener bro how much are they? Twenty, twenty-five dollars, thirty dollars. Oh yeah, for an opener. Yeah, home opener, bro. Wow. This is how we living right now. This how we living out, Chip. It's how we living right now. But wow! Shout out to our dude Mark for putting that in the Discord earlier. But if they, if 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 18 goes out there and looks either the same or better than he did last week. Like as a team, I don't know how you just don't feed into that. Like you, like that should be like you, you should be marking in that. Like that, that is it <laughs> like a hundred percent pushing that agenda. Cause as one of your favorite, one of your best lines is Damn, does, does Gail not like money. <laughs> like, right. What do you what do you think um uh, he gets the QB2 spot? Ultimately I I don't think he does. Neither me. I don't think he does and I don't think he does cuz uh the starting quarterback does not want him to be QB2. That that's why I don't think he does. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Cuz he knows if he gets banged up for a quarter, like a quarter or a half, like he did last season, and then eighteen is QB two, and he go in the game and he tearing it up, bro. Over, it up. over. Are bro. we being unfit? Are we being unfit of Jake Hayden at all? Somebody on Facebook was getting on me for that. I, I just think it's like you said, like we, it's the it's the ceiling that comes with Jake Hayner, right? I think that's what it is. It's the ceiling that comes with Jake Hayner. Um. Because nice guy. Yeah, it, like, oh, he's he's safe. Guy. You know, he's a nice guy. Need, need, need some, need some, some excitement. Thug. Thug in my life. <laughs> Maybe because I'm a thug. <laughs> no. Um, it's it, but you, if you just compare cut ups between Jake and between Spencer, if the if you told me the future of this team was 18 as QB one. And Hayner is QB two. I'm good, bro. Like let's let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's go. Let's, fuck, let's fucking roll with it. Um. So I, I don't think we're being unfair. I do think just the potential of 18 living up to his height and his you know his potential is is what the appealing part is. And I'll never forget when Greg Cosell came on the podcast and we recapped the draft. And he just threw out the the Jay Cutler comp, and I just like, damn, that's that's a good one, bro. Like that it was, is, man. 
that was a a good one. Um, and I and I feel like even Rattler right now, his footwork's probably a little better than because Cutler's footwork was yeah. like, terrible. Bro. But oh he just God, he just had, he just had a he just had an arm that he could just oh, hold that yeah. shit right. Mm-hmm. So if you telling me in the fifth round that we may get a quarterback that can that has the talent of a Jay Cutler, but is also likable as well. Mm. Sign me up, bro. Coach, like, coach, sign me up. So I, I don't think we are being unfair to to Hayner, but also too, like Rattler has to continue to go out and, and show it. Like he he yeah, has exactly. to continue to go out and to the point where it's just so loud and like death. Like it needs to be deafening, bro. Like it like it needs right. it needs to be like loud and. The only yeah. way that's going to happen is if he just goes out and play, plays well. That's it. Exactly. Um, also needs to be given an opportunity, too. Oh. <laughs> I, already, I could already see it, bro. He, if he got a series with the ones, he would throw like a 40, 50-yard bomb to Olave, bro, and it would look just like Olave was at Ohio State when he was catching. Mm. Like, I can, I can guarantee you, bro, it would just be. Mm. And and you see, you see that one time, it's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It's over. Okay. It's, it's over. So that's these they're not gonna give him that chance, bro. They, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna nope. do it. We we said this. We pointed it out. Chris Olave have been trying to tell us fans since jump, bro. Like, man, lit up when you're talking about Rattler bro. <laughs> <sighs> just like that, just like who just that that person you can't get out of your mind, like oh, oh, who's, oh, he got some talent. Like he just just oh. bubbly, bro. Oh yeah, um, um, Derek. Yeah, 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 yeah. He told us. He told he like we're not saying anything that players on the team aren't saying themselves. Like I'll just put it yeah. like that. Yeah. Um. But well, we shall see. We shall see. Hang in there, y'all. Like at the end, like I know things seem bad right now. We got y'all covered. This is football. We gonna joke. We gonna talk about it. It's it's in the day. It's just football. Don't That's do it. not let this team affect your mood. And I. If, Maybe stay away if you're in the Patreon. Stay away from the main, because main, main going through it. Main, main going, going through it. it. <laughs> main been going through it for like months, right? Months. You got a positive, positive Saints vibes channel. You could just jump in there and just have a good time. Ain't no one put no shit in that bitchin' day. That shit quiet, quiet up in there, bro. <laughs> no positive. Um, but. Thank y'all. We love y'all. We'll be back on Monday night for the Saints Niners recap pod. And with that, we're out. Peace.